that many believers today who because of spiritual carelessness are under some tremendous pressure with regards to their soul. Tyson said that is his problem. However much you clean your car, polish it, and that's the outside body is not the same as the engine. If nothing works in the engine, the body, however pay how much you paint it, goes nowhere. So also is all this part that are inward man. It is when a man's soul becomes his or her enemy, then people begin to hate themselves. People begin to fight themselves. You don't know how many people hate themselves. It is born out of that hatred for self that young ones go on self-harming. And some go beyond self-harming to committing suicide. See how suicide rate has, in, has, has increased in our, in, our, in our society. And don't think it's just for unbelievers. sharing a message titled the preciousness of your soul the preciousness of your soul and the scripture reading will be from Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and also Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 from the KJV version amen and this message actually is more of a follow-up from where we stopped last Sunday still talking about the soul amen Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 reads I quote and God said, go on, let us make man where? In our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Jump to chapter 2, verse 7. The same Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Read everybody. Go on. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Glory to God. And man became what? A living soul. The spirit and the soul are two totally different organs or part of our life, so to say. One belongs to God, while the other belongs to man. And you need to put that in your mind. By whatever name one may call them, they are completely distinct in substance and in our operation. So between the soul and the spirit are completely different. Amen. So getting an understanding of our precious our human soul is, is to keep a watch over our personality. Because it's that part of us that we can't even phantom. But the Bible says man became a living soul. It's easy to relate with ourselves with regards to our, our physical bodies. Because our physical eye can see them. Our legs, our hands and every other part of us. 
But the soul, it's very, very precious part of us. Can I amen? As a reminder about the creation of man, that we are a tripartite being, which I said last week. Say with me, I am a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body. Hallelujah. So you can see that within the first two chapters of the Bible, we see how the creation of man was described. Because if you and I don't even understand our makeup and who we are, then God forbid somebody somewhere or situation around wants to describe to us who we are. But I declare in Jesus' name, in the light of God's word, may you come to know yourself better. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In that chapter 1 of Genesis we read, it says, And God said, Let us make man. Let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. How many of you believe when God said, let us make man in our own image. Man was made in his own image right there and there. And at this point, there was no physical man. But yet, man has been created. Why? Because he's a spirit. But God now went further in chapter 2. He says, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Say with me, and man became a living soul. Now let me take you stage by stage with regards to these, with regards to the creation and the formation of man. It says there, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. This describes how God gave spirit to man. It was Adam's spirit. Say with me, God gave spirit to man. And God breathed into him. What did he breathe to him? The breath of life. That was a spirit. That came from God. Because man was formed by him, created by him. And we're made in his own image. Hallelujah. See me, I am a product of God's creation. And God, not man, not, not, not animals, not devil, God himself, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So I put here, so man's body was formed from the dust of the ground and man's spirit was given to him by God. Say with me, man's body was formed from the dust and man's spirit was given to him by God. How many of you know there's a difference between creation and formation? Creation is not the same as formation. There's a part of you that is created. There's a part of you that is formed. And then you now say, as a result of what God put into man, man then became a lead. Put out Genesis 2, 7 for me. I like the way this King James Version put it. And man became a living soul. Have you taken time to look that closely off in the recent time in your Bible? Man became a living soul. Every living soul, praise the Lord. 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 I am a living soul. Every living, living soul, soul, praise the Lord. Every living soul, praise the Lord. Man became man. The created man became a living soul. So when the created man became a living soul. After the breath of life had entered into his nostrils, man became a living soul. 
So the spirit, the soul, and the body are three separate entities. So according to the common understanding, the soul is our personality. Say the soul is our personality. Our personality is not our body. However much we, we try to dress it up, however much we try to paint it, however much, thank God for our body. That's not our personality. Our personality is rooted in our soul. The preciousness of our soul needs to be made clear to us even as we journey in our work with God. Because if we don't know how precious our soul is, then there can be all kinds of lies to confuse us. Many, many people have been made to think that their real self is their body. No. It's just like a man. However much you clean your car, polish it, and that's... The outside body is not the same as the engine. Talk to me, somebody. If I should ask many of us, when was the last time you opened the bonnet of your car? Many times we don't open the bonnet of our car until there's a problem. Even when there's a problem, we're calling for a... a um, is it a a a? <laughs> but how many of you know if nothing works in the engine, the body, however pay how much you pay, it goes nowhere. So also is all this part that our inward man. Say thank you, Lord, that I am a living soul. So last week I was emphasizing from Third John one two. In Third John one two, the Bible makes us to, to say, "He said, beloved." Go on. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. It's a present continuous thing. Just as your soul prospers. Not prosper. So if we're a living soul, it's important that our soul is prospering. Say with me, God desire that my soul keeps on prospering. Amen. Because it takes a prospering soul to actually enjoy life. A prospering soul. And I told you, that's in comparison of your will, your emotions, your mind, everything that constitutes your personality and my personality. And, and God is the one that orchestrated everything. The God breathed into the man he formed and man became a living soul. Say man became a living soul. So the soul on its own is the medium for kingdom rulership. Say the soul is the medium for kingdom rulership. To rule in life, to reign in life, in life, in this present life, the kingdom of God must invade our soul. Glory to God. Because if the kingdom does not get into your soul, it cannot get into the earth. The kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth. So for the will of God to be done here on earth, the kingdom must come. And when it comes, it must invade our soul. Say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth. So with the, with the coming of the kingdom of God invading our soul, there can be a release of the will of God on the earth. Willpower is in your soul. Say that with me. It's in our soul. It's in the willpower. It's in our soul. Because man became a living soul. Adam was a living soul. He had the... He was a living soul. They have the will. As a matter of fact, God even gave them the platform to make the choice. This is tree of life. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat that. Because the day you eat of this, you will die. So I'm leaving you with the will to make the choice. God has the power to enforce it upon them not to do it. But to whom you yield yourself, you become a servant. To whom you yield yourself, you become a slave. But there's a place where it becomes the slaves of righteousness. Which means of my own will, I say, your kingdom come. 
And from some people, they can say, I resist your kingdom. But in Jesus' name, young and old, may we never resist God's kingdom. Everybody has the willpower. With my willpower as a 12-year-old boy, I invited him into my heart. That's a will. And unfortunately, the thing is that many people today are exercising their will in the wrong place. Not just exercising it, but allowing their will now to be controlled. I said earlier on that whoever controls your soul owns you. And what and whoever controls your soul of a man rules that man. Say with me, whoever controls the soul rules the man. I was watching the documentary of the fight between uh, Tyson and Bruno. And while watching the documentary, I saw something in the light of what Michael Tyson, a man who everyone knew to be fearsome, bodily. He can tear down anyone. <laughs> but in the documentary, he began to speak on how he has a battle with his soul. Let me put that documentary, just put that clip to clip on what I put there. Hear what Tyson my said. My mind, forgive my brain, my mind is a torture chamber. There are many believers today who because of spiritual carelessness are under some tremendous pressure with regards to their soul. Tyson said that is his problem. He says he's an enemy. But your soul was never made to be an enemy to you. So it means there's an attack on the soul of man. Say that again. Now, the attack on the soul of men today is not as it was with regard to how Satan came and began to speak and converse with Lucifer. Satan has upgraded his form of attack. Just like from time to time, our software, even after you've, you have a software working in your, in your system, it will say, it will give you a lot to upgrade it. Is that not so? There will be an alert to say what? Upgrade. Because the manufacturers or who, those who are behind the making of that software from time to time, they have to make sure that it's, it's been upgraded to be able to meet the need of the hour. Do you think heaven doesn't call us for an upgrade from time to time? Yes, it does. Look at Romans chapter 12 and see how heaven always keeps calling us for an upgrade. Romans 12, verse 2. Give it to me quickly. Read everybody. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not spirit now. Renewing of your, your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God. It says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to the system, but be transformed by the renewing. It's a present continuous. Because we are either being conformed or we are being deformed. But I come against every form of spiritual deformity of the mind. Great men great women who have made great substance with regards to human wealth but with a deformed soul will find themselves living a wrecked life I'll give you an example of that from the caption I, I brought today it says not my friend may your soul never become your enemy it is when a man's soul becomes his or her enemy, then people begin to hate themselves. People begin to fight themselves. You don't know how many people hate themselves? It is born out of that hatred for self that young ones go on self-harming. And some go beyond self-harming to committing suicide. See how suicide rate has, has, has increased in our, in our, in our society. And don't think it's just for unbelievers. 
believers whose eyes are taken off the place of transformation of God's word are also susceptible to suicide. God forbid. How is this attack coming in this last day? It's coming through social media. It's coming what? Let me say this to you. Social media is not designed for your entertainment, but for your containment. Say that with me. Social media is not designed for your entertainment, but for your containment. And it takes a man or woman who knows how to bring it under control. That it will not contain you. I wrote something here. Human soul is currently being flooded by all kinds of music and videos all in the name of entertainment. But they can become avenues for soul containment. And it takes the Holy Spirit at work in you and your willingness to yield to him. Because when you look at that word, media, media. The word media also means medium. What is the meaning of media? Medium. You remember how Saul, towards the end of his life, consulted medium to get an idea of what, what's going on. He didn't consult God, he consulted a medium. And our social media can become a medium. You know why? Because it's under the control of the prince of the prince of the ear. The prince of the ear. Everything is beaming to the ear. There is a prince over the ear. Say that with me. I can't hear you. And the prince over the ear is Satan. Say there's an attack on human soul. Say that again. And this is not just in the current climate. Even the disciples that followed Jesus, they came, their soul came under an attack. Jesus saw his disciples close to him and he was giving them an antidote against this attack. Look with me. Let me read the, the NKJV version of Matthew 26 and then we also read the same version in uh, the message translation. Look at uh, Matthew 26, verse 40 to 41. Quickly. Matthew 26, verse 40 to 41. Quickly. Read everybody. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me an hour? Go on. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. Now look at the message translation. I like the way it put in the message translation. Read everybody. When he came back to his disciples, he found them sound asleep. He said to Peter, can't you stick it out with me a single hour? Stay alive. Say that again. One more time. One more time. Stay alive. Be where in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you are in danger. There is a part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God. But there's another part that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. Somebody shout glory. He says there is a part of you that is eager. What is that part of you? Your spirit. He said that part is eager for anything in God. But there is another part. Say my soul. He said that soul, that part is as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. Why will someone sleep by the fire? A man will sleep by the fire. What will happen to him? Dear friend, I'd like to invite you to start a new relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today if you have never done so. By A, acknowledge that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sin. And C, 
Confess him with your mouth as your personal Lord and Savior. So say this after me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am. A sinner in need of a Savior. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that he died for my sin. And on the third day, God raised him up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as this prayer may sound, if you pray it from your heart, God heard you. And guess what? You are saved. You are now a child of God. So I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church wherein you can grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's any way I could be of help to you, please contact the number on the screen. I'll be more than happy to support you and to help you. Until next time when I come into your house, you keep on winning because God is on your side and you are destined to win. God bless you.